There's so many dog and fox-like creatures in the Pokemon universe. But what would happen if you would fuse these dogs and create absolute abominations with them? And then, on top of that, try to play through Infinite Fusion with them? Well, today I'm here to answer that question in particular. But what exactly are dog-like Pokemon? Well, of course, you have your Arcanines, Smeargles, Puchienas, Mightyenas, but also fox-like Pokemon like Zoroark, Ninetales, and Lucario fall under this specification. I think a lot of you will love this video because we'll be seeing some awesome puppers. But let me know in the comments down below whether you're a cat or a dog person. But now we're going to bark our way through everything that the Kanto region has to offer us. After filling out our application form to become a Pokemon trainer and randomizing the entire game so we have more chances to run into dog-like Pokemon, I decided that our rival for this game will be the cats of the world. Our starter is immediately perfect, starting out with a Houndoom and Zoroark Fusion, which are both dog-like Pokemon, so we immediately get two team members off the bat. Our rival is going to have an Umbreon Beedrill Fusion for the rest of the game, which is something I'm really not too scared of. We use the word Doom from Houndoom literally and smash our rival over the head with it so that we can leave the lab, grab our balls, and look for more awesome Pokemon to fuse ours with. But do keep in mind, before the first gym, you're not going to have a lot of money to buy DNA splicers, so most of the fusing will come after. In the Pokemart, I ended up stealing a Genion, a Gengar Jolteon fusion, and I looked it up, Jolteon actually has a lot of dog traits as well, so he'll also be counting as one of our new fusion materials. Not that I'm going to fuse him with anything else, because this already looks like a peak designed Pokemon. I did also end up going for the other form of Luka Doom, just because I'd like to have more fighting and fire type coverage at the beginning of the game. While running through Viridian Forest and burning down some Beta Gibbles, I eventually did stumble upon Viridian City where we could take on our very first gym leader, Brock. Since everything is randomized, his team could be anything, from Caterpie fusions to Arceus ones. We never know what comes our way. But I definitely didn't consider seeing an actual Beyblade on the screen. Man, I loved playing with Beyblades as a kid, just dueling everybody on the playground. I don't understand why every decision on Earth isn't being decided by a Beyblade duel. Luckily, I know how to win a Beyblade battle. Just like on the playground, you just put them on fire. Once you're done with that, you just punch a bird in the face, and boom, you've got your very first gym badge. On the next couple of rounds, I decided to capture some Pokemon, so I have more fusion materials, and I have no idea why, but everything in this game looks awesome when it fuses with a Beedrill. It has to be influenced from the B move, because Beedrill itself doesn't doesn't look that good. I also ended up finding a Flareon, and you're not going to tell me Flareon doesn't look like one of those fluffy little doggies. Team Rocket was busy blowing up Mount Moon, so we helped out a little bit by helping out a screaming Geodude. But before we can really eradicate Team Rocket, I decided to fuse my Flareon with a Crobat to create Crorion. I'm just hoping my dog won't fly away now, and we ended up running into a Clefram in Mount Moon as well, which is just the perfect end boss for a cave like this. Team Rocket's experiment to fuse three Pokemon together luckily fails, which means their world domination is still miles away. So we blow up their machines and end up choosing a fossil. It doesn't really matter because I don't think I'll use any of them as fusion materials, so I just went with Helix. We finally see the light of day again, but there is something blocking the sunlight. Something absolutely horrid. Nightmare fuel. A fervoir. After destroying my own eyes, I ended up running into some very good fusion materials, namely Dark Ape, Dark Rye always makes for beautiful stuff, and the god of all of the spiders, Ardos. I fused my Dark Rye with Jolteon to create the cutest little doggo that would probably eat your dreams if you're not being careful. And then it was time to move on to the Golden Nugget Bridge. And here we have another battle with the cats. Darkion ended up taking out Maginath with some ominous winds, while Magioto, Golder, and Umbdrill filled to Lukadoom's power of punches and metal claws. So after triumphing over all of the cats once more, we can mash our way through a ton of trainers. After mashing our way through all of the other trainers on the bridge, we finally reach the next patches of grass to expend our arsenal of majestic Pokemon even more. Oh, and we also ran into the god of eggs, RP. Personally, I'd like to eat him scrambled. We end up going to the lighthouse and ask Bill what the evolution of Rhyhorn is. After totally destroying his world with that D's nuz joke, it was time for me to fuse some more. Gyreon was a very beautiful fusion, but I'm a more of a fan of Beerion. Not because it has beer in its name, okay, maybe a little bit because of that, but mostly because it's a Beedrill fusion. It's always going to look good. We ended up getting a demon dog from hell that can now fly, and 
actually resembles a gargoyle of some kind too. On top of that, we fused Lucario with God to create one of the strongest beings in the world. With these new powerhouses, I went to Misty's gym and found a beautiful Eevee Chandelure fusion. But get that off the screen, that's not why we're here. Time to challenge Misty. She ended up with a Dudu fusion, and I'm just glad Bidoof can make any Pokemon look derpy. That however doesn't mean it's safe from my Thunder Fangs from Darkeon, so after shocking it with my teeth, we ended up combining the power of Arario's punches and Darkeon's pin missiles to make the Egg Titan fall. But it did manage to take out a god which was very impressive. With our second gym badge in hand, we end up finding another cursed Gardevoir fusion. This time, she's been engulfed by a Snorlax. I ended up fusing Jolteon with Gardevoir, but it didn't turn out like I wanted it to. So instead, I put it together with Flareon, and both of those fusions actually looked very decent. In the end, I just stuck with Darkeon though. It's the best one so far. Speaking of Darkeon, he actually managed to stop a meteor from crushing into the sky. Although the meteor had the face of a Chinchou, so I don't really know what was going on there. I then wasted away days gambling together with old men, and after they stole all of my money, I ended up going to the ship that is the SSN to do even more gambling. Since I'm now a million dollars in debt, I decided to take on my rival, and if I manage to win, the cats will decide to give me all of my money back so I can get out of debt. So I had to prepare by making some more Pokemon fusions. I captured Kyogre Raichu fusion because Kyogre always makes for the most beautiful and menacing designs and on top of that it's got so many good stats and a great ability that you basically want on any Pokemon. So I fused it with Jolteon and I reversed the Darkreon fusion to create a dog that comes straight from hell. The combined powers of Aerodoom and Darkreon take out his Ryochu. This is what Alolan Raichu should have been. Kyoion ended up taking out Umdrill and Hopligator with Thunderfang's ancient powers and water pulses. Polizard looks surprisingly good. I thought it was going to look derpy, but it straight up resembles a sea monster. So after an ancient power and a seismic toss, we ended up clearing all of our debt and showing the cats that dogs are better once more. I looked at the captain's puke, and then I got out of there because I had another gym battle to go to. And I kid you not, I got the trash puzzle from the first time. That must mean this run is blessed, and if you want to bless it some more, you can always subscribe to the channel. Surge himself might be a big, strong-looking man, but his Pokemon, on the other hand, are the opposite. Starting out with a Totoary that looks very innocent, but ended up almost one-shotting me with a jump kick. If I didn't outspeed and took it out with a power-up punch shortly after. Ray Raid ended up finishing me off, but Darkreon's bites ate up the teeny tiny fish, and I also ended up putting the next Pokemon, Milodra, to sleep, and with my Bad Dreams ability, it was taking damage every single turn. Combine that with the bite damage, and this battle was over in a flash. On my way to Rock Tunnel, I found a Tentalax. I honestly think the Snorlax that it's eating needs some help. I also made a grave error by fusing an Espeon with a Gardevoir to create a beautiful cat, so I'm basically just shooting myself in the foot here. Time to put this thing back in the box. Chardoom turned out like a dragon dog straight from hell. I don't know why Tyrant Doom is wearing lipstick, but I'm having none of that. Instead, I ended up creating the Chinchou Hound Doom fusion, Chin Doom that actually looks really nice. Just outside of Rock Tunnel, I ended up finding a Nine Toad, which means we have a new team member to fuse with Nine Tails. In Rock Tunnel itself, I found a fun looking Cacpur and a majestic looking Milotler. I wouldn't mind running into that in my local woods. Shortly after, we arrive in Lavender Town and do some extra fusions with our new Ninetales. The Beedrill one ended up looking really nice once more, but Gardevoir and Duskull were just too weird to use. So I ended up going with Goat Tails that looks like the best Gardok ever. It would probably just explode all over your burglars and enemies. After this, Dooslash tried to crawl out of hell, but we put him right back in there. And then we ran into a wild Houndlax, which is just that one meme dog. I love it. And I'll probably be using it in the future too. Electivire finally gained the fighting type that it always deserved to have. And then we went back to the Pokemon Tower in Lavender Town to take down some more cats. He starts off with Porcupine, which is funnily enough a dog looking thing. And he also has Missigno on his back, so I was pretty scared. Chindoom and Arario work together to finish it off with Electro Balls and Hyper Voices. On top of that, the next Pokemon got Bone Rushed. And Umdrill and Ardor just got Hyper Voiced once more to win this battle with just a 
lot of screaming. We can now leave the Pokemon Tower even though we saw an old man getting kidnapped. But our troubles didn't end there. We got ambushed by a hunchbird with a gun. He threatened to steal my money once more. Luckily, Mr. Ring was there to save us. He actually reminds me of that one TV show with the bear that sings at the moon. I fused my dog with a woman after that and it became very overpowered. Then we went to help out Erica who was having some trouble in her sewers. So after crawling through the worst smells you've ever witnessed in your life while finding absolute titans like Sundawn, I mean this thing is just pure comedy. But that thing wasn't the real boss. Giovanni was. But was he any stronger than Sundawn? Let's find out. And that's when I realized my Pokemon were 10 levels below his. But that wasn't going to stop me from totally crushing him. Gardedoom chipped down Charizard with confusions until it eventually took me out and also healed up with a full restore. So Goatails ended up smacking it down before Empotrio came out, a beautiful looking sprite that despite its looks is a nice type at all. It even ended up one-shotting Goatails and Darkreon before I could finally bring in Arario to bonk it back into the ground with bone rushes while blasting the last Pokemon away with Hyper Voice. With Giovanni being neutralized, the city is safe and we can follow Erika back to her gym after picking up the Silvscope. But obviously we had to do some extra Pokemon fusions so that we're prepared to take her on, like Snorion, the thing that will eat all the plants, Electiario looks phenomenal, and while Charion was probably the best bit to go here, I eventually decided to go with the bubbly Polyrion. I then remembered that Erika was waiting for me, and you can't keep a lady waiting. So like the real gentleman I am, I was here to take her gym badge. She started out with a slow bro that was being eaten by a Steelix. So after power up punching and bone rushing with Electiario, we quickly got to Unionard, which got bone rushed too. And the last one, Maroark, managed to survive with a teeny tiny bit of HP and just sucker punched me to death. So with one last Thunder Fang, the fourth gym badge was mine. On my way to Saffron City, I got stopped by a Team Rocket Grunt that had way too high level of Pokemon, and he ended up being hard than all of the gym leaders I've faced so far. But with the power of friendship, we managed to get through it, and after, we ended up running into a Zoroark fusion, which adds another team member to our beautiful army of dogs and foxes. I tried fusing it with a ton of stuff like Kyogre and Duskull, but they didn't really grab me as designs. So I ended up going with Gyarados of all things. This will only be temporary though, because Zoroark itself doesn't seem to be too happy about it either. Back to the Pokemon Tower we go, and here we found a legendary Samurai. So what do you do when you encounter something like that? You trap it in a ball for eternity. We end up fighting Mr. Fuji at the top of the tower and had basically no problems reaching him. After he hands me the Poke Flute, I decide to head back to Saffron City because we have to clear out the entirety of Sylph Co. But before barging in there without any plan, I knew I had to buff up my team a bit. So we created the meme Pokemon Houndlax, the Rocket Dog Garion, the thing that should not be on the screen, Ninevor, Glycerion, which is just going to be very strong even though it looks cursed and then the best fusion of this entire video are you ready for this beauty this absolute unit the kyogre lucario fusion kyoario ready to blast you off the screen with a pulse of water i went to the local pokemon just to buy some extra balls and stuff but it's been taken over by team rocket and you can get special rocket balls here that are only available until you've cleared out Silph Co. so if you want any of those go and pick them up it's time to play hero now we save everybody out of the building because we don't want team rocket to have any hostages here and after reaching the top floor the building was flooding with cats again he ended up with a dark raid as his first pokemon which is one i've personally used as well in my poison type video but glycerion shows it what real power is after it turns it back into a burned bouquet of roses with flare blitzes i also ended up one-shotting sifa and then i sent in curario so origin pulse umdrill lukachoke and sendal were no different as they drowned in all of the water that was flooding the building and now for once in history the cats and dogs will be teaming up to take down the evil mafia your boss Giovanni. I bet that's a sentence you've never heard before. Anyway, his first two Pokemon were Blizzactyl and Ivy Lord. So I ended up taking out Blizzactyl with Zodos's Aqua Tails and Ice Fangs, while the next Pokemon, Kotonta, did not have mercy for my partner's torch.
Snorlix, who got Flare Bliss and one shot. Glirai was a little bit of a problem taking out my Ninevor and Zodos without much problems. I brought out my own legendary and just Ice Beamed the Glirai twice to take it out, which meant Ivy Lord was the only one left. With a couple more Ice Beams and Origin Pulses, the Plan Balloon also fell, and we ended up becoming a hero to the people of Sylph Co. I then created Elixion by fusing Jolteon with Electivire, and Zoroark and Gardevoir ended up very majestically, which is not what I would have expected. Venatils was a bit cursed, but I decided to use it in the next gym anyway, as I ran into a Charchu. I really like how the wings turn blue. Yeah, the face is a little bit weird, but this is honestly a peak fusion. Too bad that I had to blow it up and go to Sabrina instead. I don't know what her problem was, but this Clefmar was absolutely cursed, so I had to blast it out of here with an Origin Pulse. That made Sabrina mad as she wild charged Kyorio, which forced me to bring out Gardevoir and Psychic it into the next room. Slugmander was very pathetic, so it just sky uppercut that. But the last Pokemon, Metails, was an absolute monster as it killed my Venatails, took down Gardevoir with a Meteor Mash, and left Glyceron with only 2 HP before I could finally finish finish it off its Kyopper cut. Believe it or not, but Sabrina was actually very hard to deal with. Darkreon honestly looked more like a cat than anything else, so I decided not to use it. Houndoom and Electrofire created a monster straight from Doom, and Houndchomp is basically the same thing, but just thinner. On my way to Koga, I ran into a Mega Jirachi, and the eye in the middle of its stomach is looking at me weird. I also ended up capturing an Aegean Z, because Aegislash and Porygon Z make for the best fusions. On the other hand, SU looks way more like a cat, but maybe we can make something cute with it, and if we can and we'll just throw it off a cliff or something. Nidoku actually kind of looks like a dog, but also a saber-toothed tiger, which are more related to cats, so we'll have to see what we do with them. And also ended up capturing a Vapor Tay, and Entei has a lot of dog-like features, and although he also resembles a lion, I feel like he can definitely go through as a very bulky, but very good. Doggo. And if you don't agree, leave it in the comments, because that's great for the algorithm. We then reach Fuchsia City, but before we face Koga, we have a couple more things to do. And what does this entail, you might ask? Well, make a hundred more fusions. I started off with the Sword Doggo Aegeon that has a literal Aegislash in its mouth. I then made a gorgeous looking Fleon that has the traits of both fire and water. Nine Tails and Spiritomb turned into the Forbidden Fox. Nine Licks has the big head in the history of Pokemon, but by far my favorite Ninetales fusion so far is Dark Tales. The color scheme just works so well with the design, so you better be sure you'll see this beast in action. Zoroark and Porygon Z creates a glitch that's literally breaking out of your screen and grabbing you through your computer slash phone slash whatever you're looking out of. You'd think Arceus and Raikou would turn into something cool, but nah, this is just a really weird looking horse. Raikou with Chincha on the other hand, once again turns into a majestic beast. And after fusing it with Houndoom, its face just doesn't look right. But then I made it fuse with Umbreon and created the God of Lightning and Thunder. Then I moved on to some Entei fusions. Jute is ready to chase you to hell and back. While Girate doesn't look all that great, he's probably one of the most overpowered things we can get. Ariate was actually very cute, which is something I would have never expected from a spider. And Gardate has a literal rainbow coming out of its back. But the one fusion I went with was the Manticore fusion Glistay. And he's also going to be the one that faces off against the ninja master Koga and his Electinair. And despite being 10 level of Zyre, because of her paralysis, I actually lost this matchup. Despite being 10 levels higher. I guess being a fire flying type isn't that great against a dragon electric one. Darktails was then able to take it out, but I got paralyzed, which meant that the next Pokemon only took two Two hits from Fate Attack before it had to swap out into Aegeon who could then take it out with two Thunders and a Sacred Sword. Cherorus was ready to burn my team to the ground. So I hit a last resort and the Thunder before Aegeon got taken out by Dragon Rage. That's when Flayon went for the Hydro Pump and killed it. Shedgon was an easy Aurora Beam and just like that we showed Koga the power of dogs. I hope he'll never underestimate them again. Because we're looking for some new ones in the Safari Zone. The first one I captured here was a weird looking Scizor, but the second one was actually a dog, the legendary vine Pokemon, Tainine. 
Being able to fuse with Arcanine makes me so happy because he's basically the equivalent of like a golden retriever in the real world. Everybody loves him. Believe it or not, but the next Pokemon I found was Tentagle, and he looks straight out of Splatoon, which is a really cool reference, but Smeargle is also a dog-like Pokemon, so another thing we can fuse with. I also found your old DS lying around here named Rofisk, so if you could come pick that up, that would be great. With that, we pick up the HM for serve and start fusing our new boy Smeargle. I was able to fuse some pretty cool ones, but also very weird ones, like Uncle, Smearfisk, who is just a drawing. Spearligator is not on my list of Pokemon I'd ever use, but Smear Doom, on the other hand, looks very colorful, but it's nothing compared to my favorite artist, Smear 2. Lucas Slash just turned into a cursed head with a sword and shield. I don't know what this is supposed to be. The two Lucario Charizard fusions are. Uh, and while Ariario was pretty okay, once I fused it with Jolteon, I actually created something I very much liked to see. I found a Swampert on the way and had to fuse it with Flareon to create something stupid looking. And Way9 looked very nice, except for its eyes. Aranine looked like an actual gargoyle. And if you fuse two dogs together, you get a three-headed dog? Don't know how that works, but it's basically Cerberus. Snorlax and Arcanine didn't make for a fat looking dog, more like a happy one. But the one I ended up using was Jira 9. With that out of the way, I could finally surf the Cinnabar Island, where we basically find nothing in the abandoned mansion except for a bald old man with glasses. So we send him back to his job and fused Umbreon with Entei to create my last fusion before taking on Blaine and his Mew Choke. He's starting out strong, but that isn't going to hold me back. Giranine actually ended up losing this matchup even after setting up a Dragon Dance, all because he kept healing up with Hyper Potions, and in the end, I missed one of my Aqua Tails, so Cross Chop had to end my life. I brought in Poriarch and then took it down with a single try attack. I don't know what this man has with legendary fusions, but his next two were a Muter and a Lupi. And his last Pokemon was kind of gross. Very gross, actually. So Blaine's team was stacked. I still ended up taking it out with Discharge, and with that, our 7 gym badge is acquired, which means that we did two more fusions, namely Lunine, which finally makes Arcanine into an actual legendary dog, as well as Poly9. Team Rocket is once again trying to steal a boat to get to Mount Ember, so we have to go after them, because Zap Mulcuno is about to be created. And we'll be defeating it right now. For those of you that don't know how this fight works, it's basically a 3 on 1, and they get attacked 3 times every single turn. So spread moves like Rock Slide and Surf are crucial in this battle. I immediately started off with one, Boreark with a Discharge. He only managed to get one off before biting the dust. Our bubbly friend Poly9 was also able to hit a Surf before going down, so Darktails finished off the Articuno form with a flamethrower, and it was also able to deliver the final blow to the Moltres. With Zapdos being the last man standing, I bring in Spirion and just thunder it a couple of times, without taking too much damage to defeat Giovanni and his evil schemes for one last time. Is what we were thinking, because after they left Mount Ember, we got a call that the 8th gym leader in Viridian City has returned. So in order to do some preparations, we had to fuse some more. Like the mysterious Nine Ray, as well as the shiny Arcanine that just fused with Jolteon, the Dark Knight Adriorc, and his funny looking brother, Zukao. Joltark and Lucariorc all look very nice, but were not the final form I was looking for. Instead, I found Zoario, who I did decide to take into my final battle, as well as Crow Doom 9 2 and Spirin 9. 9 2 being the coolest one out of the three by far, but these powerhouses should be able to deal with Giovanni one last time and snap him out of this universe. I start out by taking out Clefion with a Psychic and a Flamethrower from 9-2. Swicruel gets hit by a Psychic and starts running for the hills. And so he brings in Pilotl. I decide to just Flamethrower and Psychic it, but then I get into trouble because Glalery comes out and Hydro pumps my boy. Zwario on the switch in, killing him in just one hit. Crodoom stands no chance either, and even the legendary Umte gets put to rest. So what do I do instead? I bring in Spirinine and use a Fire Fang. This causes him to swap in Mamflosion, something I'm actually pretty scared of. I'm not going to lie here, I only hit 3 Sucker Punches and they didn't do as much damage as they needed to. So Mamflosion summoned a Blizzard and put an end to my ghostly dog. 
Only 9-2 remains, and with a Psychic, we end off this battle, get our final gym badge. I do one last fusion before I challenge my rival, and that's Jolteon combined with Raikou, and this might actually be the coolest dog ever. It's not too complicated of a design, but it still looks absolutely awesome. And on top of that, he immediately starts putting in work by thundering my rival's Gentoo on the very first try. Umdrill puts up a good fight, only leaving me with 10 HP before I finish it off with a discharge. Drowner got bitten by Umte. Pitpoke then looked absolutely derpy, so we had to fling him into the sky with Psychic. Murbok got flamethrowered, and the last Pokemon, Umsire, got extreme speeded four times in a row. And you already know what that means, defeated our final cat battle before the Elite Four and Champion. So I ended up going to Victory Road and capturing an Amphidra, which could give me some good fusions for the ending section. I then went through Victory Road battling many legends, and not so much legends alike, before reaching the Indigo Plateau where I could do my final set of fusions to prepare for the Elite Four. So I managed to create a Spaghetti Entei as well as a Beta one, which was super cool to see. But ultimately, I went with Dark Tay for my last few battles. Venatail became a beautiful looking plant doggo, while our tails looks a little bit like Medusa's dog. And I don't know why, but this Vapor Tails looked very neat to me. The two Zoroark and Arcanine fusions looked very decent, and Zoe was a very cute flying little boy. But in the end, my choice for Zoroark was going to be Zokazam. These two color schemes together just make for something absolutely gorgeous. For Arcanine, I actually had three contenders, which was the Warrior Arcalade and the cute pillow Arcalax, but ultimately I decided to go with Gar9, the shark dog. For Smeargirl, I also had three potential candidates. One of them painted the Mona Lisa, one of them had a editing error of some kind, and the last one had an entire arsenal of stuff to paint your house with. So let me know in the comments down below which one of these three you would have taken into the Elite Four with you, because he's not coming at all. Smeargirl sucks. Updoom was pretty good, but I decided to go with Anubis, the god of the underworld, Houndcham. And with that, you've basically got my team, so let's get into the Lorelei battle. Lorelei has a very cool starter, Garay. But it's technically still like a cat-like fusion, so my dog should be able to just eat it. So I bring in Kyorio, and just before I take it out with Ice Beam, she brought in Flydra, who obviously got one shot. Then Garay came back out again, so we took that down too. I also killed Drusilla and Yandra, but her last Pokemon, Warkshire, was able to take down Kyorio, as well as Dark Tay, but both of them were able to do some chip damage so that Hound Champ could finish it off with one final crunch. The second elite four member Bruno is everybody's favorite, but he isn't taking anything seriously, with his first two Pokemon being first stage evolutions. So Zokazam can make quick work of them with psychics. I then discharge Hound Drio into the ground with Jolt Coup, extinguish Shargar with a surf from Kyario, and end off Wutato with a psychic from Dark Tay. Agatha had something else in mind, starting out with an Infer Bite that doesn't bite at all, instead it uses acrobatics, but it can do enough damage and I just spam Psychic 5 times in a row to win this fire type matchup. My Gar9 then managed to take out his Char Bite with a Dragon Rush and 2 extreme speeds, but it wasn't done there because Dawn Terra took a Fire Fang to the face before finishing me off, so I ended up taking it out with an extra sensory from Jolt Coup, while Kyario Ice Beamed his way through Venus. Terra. And the last Pokemon, Bayesire, basically got frozen the same way. With that, we can put Agatha aside and focus our main point on Lance. Is he going to give us more of a challenge? Well, let's find out together. He started out with a very nice looking Glawile. Dark Day's Lava Plume melted it down before Mutzel could come out. I also ended up Lava Pluming this twice and tanking a Hydro Pump before Mamrion showed up in the field. So I brought in Curario and surfed it out of here. But Jim Burrell was able to superpower me, I wish I hadn't seen this Jim Burrell to be completely honest with you, but Gar9 was able to get it off the screen with a Dragon Rush just like the last Pokemon, Ganras, which means we've defeated Lance and he actually told me that the region has been taken over by cats, so our dogs have to put an end to them. But instead of starting off with a cat, they start off with a bunny that I discharge and as I discharge they decide to full restore and swap out into a different looking bunny. So I end up going into Dark Day and just 
just go for the lava plume to take it out. Mananani came out once more, this time taking out my Joltku, so I had to bring in Zokazam and just use Psychic 9 days and recover to win this battle, but Umdrill also decided to show up after this. So I bring in Garnine, who's the perfect matchup here. It basically does no damage to me, and I just totally pummel it into the ground. For Shedizard with Wonder Guard, I knew I had to swap into Kuario. I just used the Surf, and boom, that was also out of here. The final team member of this video was Clef Slash. So we just drown and rust that sword with Surfs from Kuario, the perfect Pokemon to finish this with. This felt amazing. We barked our way through the Kanto region. If you would like me to do this again, but with the cats in maybe the Johto region to do a follow-up part on this video, let me know down below. And as always, I would love to know what your favorite fusion of this video was. For me, it was Kurario. I love playing Infinite Fusion. A lot of you love watching it. So let me know what you want to see next. Now, with all of that out of the way, I want to thank my wonderful membership and Patreon supporters for supporting the channel. If you'd like to do so yourself, you can click the links in the description. You get access to some pretty cool emotes, a special chat in my Discord, and it just helps me out a ton in general. And as always, people, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. I'm Zwiggo, and I'll see y'all next time.